in one of the previous videos which i had posted on cagr i received a lot of requests that please make a separate video on irr and also try to compare the relationship between cagr and xir well your wish is my command so i thought of making a separate video on xir Hi guys, Sia Rachana Ranade here and I welcome you all to my new video on XIRR. If you remember in the previous video on CAGR, I had given you an example wherein I had compared the percentage returns by comparing the initial investment with the final return. Uh, CAGR, there's a very basic peculiarity. The basic peculiarity is that inflow should be only at one point of time and your final outflow or your final return should also be only at one point of time. But what if there is something like an sip what happens in an sip is there a single investment is it a one time investment or are there multiple investments throughout the year answer is there are multiple investments throughout the month so whenever i talked about cagr i guess i had given two examples in the video both examples one thing was in common there's only one investment and there is only one return okay but if you want to calculate a return over a period of time when you invest on a monthly basis or when you invest on a quarterly basis then cagr does not work for you what works for you is xirr okay uh, frankly speaking whenever we learn any course like chartered accountancy or for any finance course for that matter there is nothing like xirr and you might be shocked there is only irr and what is irr it's internal rate of return to simplify things what is irr it is nothing but the rate at which the business is able to generate its returns right uh, so just as an example if i say irr for my business is 12% then what does it mean if i invest 100 rupees in my business by the end of the year i'll be able to generate 112 rupees that is a simple meaning of irr then why this xirr comes into picture microsoft excel while developing various formulas financial formulas they rephrased or renamed the irr as xirr and nothing else so if you ask me what is the difference between irr and xirr what is my answer there's no difference irr is what we call it academically and if you want to calculate the same thing irr in irr in excel it is called as xirr i hope irr versus xirr is clear both are same xirr is the terminology for ms excel okay let me give you an example <clears throat> example is that if i say you have to give me 1000 rupees per month please this is just an example okay you need not pay me anything you just have to pay 1000 rupees per month to me do this for let us say 13 months one year one month okay and i promise that at the end of this time frame i'll give you 14500 rupees okay so tell me how much you have paid me you have paid me 13000 rupees and how much i have promised to pay you it's 14500 rupees tell me is it worth investing money in this scheme or it's not worth investing money in this scheme difficult to answer yes quickly tell me is cagr going to help you yes or no answer is no why because there is no lump sum investment i have re i am repeating this point cagr is useful only and only when there is a lump sum investment when is xirr going to be useful it's going to be useful when there is a periodic investment part by part month by month quarter on quarter you are going to invest money that's where xirr is going to play a big role the question is how do we calculate that okay so for that what i've done is in excel i'm going to show you a very 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 simple way of calculating it what i've done i've taken this data let us say sip date and amount sip date is starting from 10th of january 2018 and you are doing this for 13 months i told you so you are doing it till 17th of february 2019 okay uh, or let us say 17th of january 2019 so jan is coming twice that's a period of 13 months and what happens is on 17th of february that is after one month in the 14th month i'm going to give you a return promised return of 14500 the answer is that if i calculate an absolute return what is absolute return absolute return is nothing but like we whatever we were taught in third standard selling price minus cost price is equal to profit and then profit divided by cost price into 100 is your profit percentage remember your good old third standard days yes that's how we calculate profit percentage uh, a similar variation of that instead of doing two steps what is a simple formula simple formula is basically just take a total of this this total is nothing but what 13000 what is 13000 13000 is nothing but your cost price 
that's the money that you have invested 13,000 right you can also use a normal sum formula and I'm sure everyone knows this in Excel if I'm just dragging this down I can see here what is the sum 13,000 right tell me how much is the redeem redemption value redemption is what I'm going to get it's 14,500 if I were to calculate an absolute return absolute return means what this is what I had invested this is what I got how do I calculate it it's very simple is equal to this divided by this minus one this is a shortcut for first calculating the profit then profit divided by cost price into 100 this is a simple formula okay if I say enter here you can see 11.54 I'm just going to take it into percentages and I'm going to increase to zeros so you can see here 11.54 I'll just increase one more zero here. Okay, so now the 11.54 figure matches. But tell me, is 11.54 a correct return that I'm calculating? Answer is no. Why no? Let us understand this. This 1000 was invested for how many months? This 1000 was invested from 10-1-2018 till, se till 17 to 2019 So this was invested for almost a time frame of 14 months. Okay. This 1000 was invested almost for a time frame of 13 months. This 1000 was invested almost for a time frame of 12 months. I hope you are understanding this. One, one month, I'm going down. And in short, the last investment that I made, this 1000 on 17th of January, this was invested only for one month. Okay. Now, if I were to calculate the effective return, so basically, how do I have to go about this? I have to calculate this 1000, which is invested for 14 months. Then this 1000 which was invested for 13 months, so on and so forth, till this 1000 which was invested only for one month. If you try to do this on paper with the help of a pen and a calci, that's going to consume a lot of time. What's going to be a simple way out? Simple way out is XIRR. How to use that formula? That's going to be discussed in the immediate next section. And the wait of entire two seconds is over. Let's understand how to calculate XIRR using Excel. Simple is equal to XIRR. Okay. Open the bracket. Now, the moment you open the bracket, Excel helps you as to how you're going to use the formula. Can you see your values? Tell me what are the values? Values are 1000 per month and the last redemption value is what? 14,500. So, what I do is just drag this. These are all my values for which I have to calculate XIRR. Then I just put a comma. Now, what are to be, what is to be done? I have to put in the dates. Dates are from what to what? From 10th of January 2018 till 17th of February 2019. Okay. A comma, if I put a comma, then it asks me what is your guess. Guess is basically, uh, if you want to put any guess like 8%, 9%, whatever, but you can just leave this out. Even if you don't press anything, Excel by itself takes a guess of 10%. Don't go into that. It's okay. You can just close the bracket here right away and just press enter. Okay. The moment you're going to put this, see, I got the same XIRR of 19.8%. Means what? On an average, if I average out the investments, the first thing that I, want, I was telling you, first 1000 invested for 14 months, so on so forth till the last investment which was invested only for one month if I'm averaging it out on an average I got a return of 19.8 percent vis-a-vis 11.4 percent which was the absolute rate of return can I say XIRR is giving me a better idea of my returns answer is absolutely yes I hope you have understood how XIRR, XIRR needs to be calculated okay be very careful on how you input the dates okay uh, I'll give you a simple example for this instead of putting this dashes instead of putting it in a date format if I do this okay, so 10 1 2018 um, okay forget it instead of this see the main point that I want to tell you is that the format in which date is written is very important if you do a wrong format your XIRR will not be calculated so I'll give you a simple example here instead of 10 dash 01 dash 2018 had I written 10 1 2018 with dots in between just have a look at this column okay XIRR column and I'm pressing enter boom gone it doesn't recognize this as a proper date so it has to be in which format 10 dash 01 dash 2018 moment you do this everything else is sorted out and you'll get the value so very important how you input the date that is very crucial otherwise you will not be able to calculate the amount of xirr i hope this point is very clear always remember this it has to be dd dash mm dash y y y why okay yes now that you have understood my entire explanation, I must read out some point from my PPT because I have taken a lot of efforts to draft this PPT and I must read it out. Otherwise, I'll feel bad why I did all these things, right? So, listen. XIRR is nothing but modified CAGR. Why modified CAGR? CAGR is only single input, single output. Here, 
over a period of time it is used to calculate return over the holding period when the investments are multiple or in varied frequency we have discussed this it considers the cash inflows and outflows during the investment period and compares with the final receivable lump sum amount it gives importance to the time and period of investment so that's why i was telling you about the date and the amount of investment instead of telling this step by step because it's like this big i've already taught you how to calculate xirr a just quick recap for you first of all important mm dd y y y y format number 1 number 2 why minus 1000 and why this is plus 14500 always remember thumb rule whenever you are talking about outflows outflows are always written in negative it's money going out na so money, your balance is decreasing so always remember any outflow has to be accompanied with a minus sign whereas any inflow will always be written in a positive sign so that's why 14500 in a positive number 3 to be remembered how do we calculate xirr we just say is equal to xirr and then we give the range for values comma give the range for dates see that's how we had calculated it very easy now right now let's talk about a case where there could be multiple payouts means what assume that i'm investing 10000 rupees instead of per month now let us take per year okay and let's see if xirr works out for a yearly in investment instead of a monthly investment so assume that i'm investing 10000 in year 1 10000 in year 2 year 10000 in year 3 and year 4 i feel that i should take out a little bit of my money okay year 5 again i start investing year on year i start investing let's say around 9th or 10th year again i feel i should take a payout and maybe at the end of the tenure i do a full withdrawal does the xirr formula work here let's check this out okay so what have i written multiple payout means nothing but removing removing money by selling a part of the asset just before the complete sale of asset it's just like taking out a portion of the accrued gain okay same thing i was talking about uh okay just forget it let's go to the xirr formula so what i've done is just check this out 2001 2 3 4 until 2015 okay so in this case i've said year 1 how much do i invest 10000 year 2 10000 year 3 10000 year 4 what have i done have i invested 5000 or have i withdrawn 5000 i have withdrawn 5000 how did you understand because there is no minus sign here if i had invested it this should have been accompanied by a minus sign any outflow is a minus sign any inflow is a positive sign again investment investment outflow 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 whatever this 30000 again is a sale of investment that's why it's backed by a positive sign rather than a negative sign and what happens towards the end it's 250000 positive okay so what do we mean what has happened in 2015 i have liquidated my entire investment here okay so how do we calculate xirr is rishta bhai soch nahi so same thing formula is same whatever is the scenario all payouts and only one pain or payout pain payout pain combination formula is same how do we do that same thing is equal to xirr all these amounts comma entire date easy yes okay we are almost at the end of this discussion till now we had discussed only one scenario where the investment amount is constant okay so for example in the first example i took sip monthly of 1000 in the second example i took a yearly investment but 10000 only would there be a change if instead of a constant amount if the amount varies so for example what i've taken here is uh, again a yearly investment from 2006 to 2019 and here if you check this out i have varied the investment for businessman it can be difficult to maintain an exact amount of sip so they may say this time i had a good profit i'll invest more maybe next year i had comparatively lesser profits i'll invest less okay so let's say 15000 15000 then again directly 35000 then again 15 15 followed by directly 50000 okay all these are negatives so come in outflow towards the end of 2019 620000 is the inflow how to calculate xirr same okay three scenarios again how to calculate exactly same is equal to xirr blue is the values and red are the dates very easy okay so let me just quickly recall whatever we have done we have done three scenarios till now fourth one is the last one first scenario we did monthly sip scenario okay scenario number 2 we discussed that instead of monthly investment it was a yearly investment uh, wherein we talked about a mixture of inflows as well as outflows number 3 we said that uh, the amount could be uneven okay so the third third case study was a combination of uneven amounts as well as inflows and outflows mixed together number 4 scenario we'll wrap it up we'll mix it up so what could be the scenario in the fourth scenario let's say the amounts are also uneven and the dates are also uneven so how could this work out to be so let's just check this out 
assume that this is your case study where the investment date is 16 august 2008 then 17th december 2008 directly so nothing in september october november then directly 21st january 2010 so on so forth if you can see the month is also ekdam at random date is also random amounts are super random there is no uh, you know specific flow there are some inflows there are some outflows i'm so sorry there are some inflows there are some outflows and towards end 21st january 2020 i finally had an inflow of 150000 okay now i just uh, thought of going into the shoes of mr amitabh bachan and i thought of playing kon banega karodpati with you but don't worry even if you get the answer you are not going to get 1 crore rupees okay in fact i'm giving you a homework okay so what you have to do is open excel you have to type out this okay that'll take not more than 2 to 3 minutes type that out then what you have to do is tell me which is the correct answer first one is 8.42 9.96 and uh, whatever rashna ma'am is says is correct okay <laughs> so this forget about the fourth one tell me about your answer among first second and third what i'm going to do is i'm not going to tell you the answer right away i'm going to tell you the right answer by pinning my comment in the same video but i'm going to pin the comment after two days so that i get to know whether you are able to understand whatever i'm sharing with you so try this out by the way how to calculate it remember that rishta wahi soch nahi so finally same thing is equal to xrr values dates exactly same thing is to be done be careful with the dates and i hope you should get this well that's it from my side for this video i hope you have understood very clearly what is the difference between xirr and cagr uh, if you are liking my videos uh, consider subscri- subscribing to my channel hit the like if you want to if you have really like the content i hope you are aware about my memberships you can check out the join button which now appears on my channel and i hope you are uh, understanding whatever i am teaching i am going to understand it by way of your comments which you are going to put in this video don't forget to put your comment don't forget to put your answer don't forget to read my pinned comment which is going to come up in the same video after two days so that's it from my side jai hind bye bye